Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. More recently we did a video with some slide up text on hover. Somebody asked if we could blur the background out when it happened. Yep, yeah, sure can. I've got an image there when I hover over it. We've got some text that's going to slide up and it's going to blur out that image background there. Really easy to do. We've got to write a couple of lines of code for this today. But any CSS code I write, I'll put down below the video and you're welcome to use it. Copy, paste it, however you wish. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. And once enabled, let's go down to where we want to work. I've got a section here, the blue tab. Inside I've got a row, the green tab, with two columns in it. Obviously you build as many columns as you want. I'm going to use a call to action module today, but you can pretty much use this for any module you want. There's the call to action module. Okay, I've got my module in there. Before I go any further, what I'm going to do is go and put the image that I want in the background. So I'm going to save my module. I'm going to go back into the row, the green tab. We're working on the second column, column one, column two. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to add a background image. We've got color, gradient, image, which we're going to use today, video, background pattern, or background mask there. Let's pop an image in there. As I'm using fairly light text, I'm going to use a fairly dark image. Let's use that cityscape. I'm going to pop it in there. And you may have noticed, or, or you may not have noticed because you can't see it, you can't see the actual image there. It's because our module's sitting on top of it, and our module's got a background. I'll take that background in a way in a minute, but we'll use it to gauge how deep our module is for the time being. Now, while we're in the column, I'm also going to give it a fixed height. Let's go over to the advanced. I'm going to go to the custom CSS. I'm going to give it a height. I'm going to say 350 picks for mine. And as you can see, as I've added some height there, you can see the image down below our module, which is great. And use the height to give your image the aspect ratio that you want. Now, if you're gonna use this on tablet and mobile, and this is common to all Divi modules, if you hover over the dark writing here, you'll see some little icons appear. If there's a little mobile phone type icon, click on it and you'll get a desktop version, a tablet version, and a phone version, and you can set different heights for these to maintain whatever aspect ratio you want, or just to fit the content in that you want. I'm going to stick to the desktop today, but that's a great little option. And once you do set these, if you can, it's always a great idea to check it actually on the real devices, because there is a little bit of difference. It works well, but it's a bit of a rough guide, really. Okay, well, let's go back to desktop. And what I'm also going to do here, I'll put a semicolon so we can add another line of code. And don't forget this code's going to be all down below the video. I'm actually going to hide any overflow. So when we push this module down or up or to the side, whichever way you want to do it, we won't see it spilling out of this column. So we can do that simply with overflow. Colon hidden. That's awesome. So we can leave our row now and save all changes in the main row settings. We'll go back into our module. Okay, what I really want to do, well, I want to kind of centralize this and I want it to have a call to action button too, so we can take our visitors somewhere. So being a call to action module, before the button's going to show up, you have to put a link in just down below here. I'm going to put a hashtag in place of a real link. And always best practice, if you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're linking off-site, open it in a new tab. That way your site's going to stay open. Great, well, we've got our button there. Let's just add a bit of padding so we can centralize this. So I'm going to go to Design, down to Spacing, Padding. Let's try 70 pixels. We want to make sure we cover the whole of the column because we're actually using the module to trigger it to slide up when we hover over. So if I put some on the bottom as well, not quite enough. Let's try 80 pixels. 
yeah that's going to cover it that's great but what i now want to do is push this all the way down so we can't see any of the text or the button but i still need padding on top to be able to trigger the hover effect so i know 80 and 80 is going to work fine so let's push it down i know that's 350 height the column so if i actually put 350 hit padding on the top that will push it all the way down there so let's change that to 350 that's fine as you can see it's pushed all that text way out of view down the bottom here and that's where that overflow stops us from seeing it overflow hidden great then when we hover over it i want it to come back up and to be 80 and 80 again so again common to all dv modules if we hover over the dark writing here little icons pop up if there's a little arrow there we can set a hover state desktop states when your mouse is not on it which is exactly what we want there hover state is when your mouse is on it so when the mouse is on it i want it to be that 80 and 80 again so i'm just going to put 80 there and we've got the chain check so it'll do both and it's back in the correct position now again if you're using it on tablet and mobile you'll want to adjust these using the little mobile phone icon for tablet and mobile there let's go back to desktop mode that's great now what we want to do is take away this background so we can actually see the image then we will apply another bit of css that will make the image blow up blow out so to get rid of the background we just need to go to content background there's the default background it is it's just a color we hover over it little trash can to get rid of it and we're left with our image fantastic now if I go up, hit the little arrow, and we hit the hover effect, you'll see that writing pops up over it, which is exactly what we want. But because it's a busy image, it's kind of hard to read that writing. It's getting a little lost in that image. And that's why we'll add a blur effect in the background, which will make the content stand out a lot more. Now the time it takes by default with Divi to go from desktop to hover, is 300 milliseconds if you want to change that you can do that in the advanced over here and down to transitions there's the default 300 mils if you want to change it just type in your new value or use the slider and you can increment up and down with the little arrows here for me actually that 300 milliseconds is going to work perfectly today okay well let's blur out this image so again while we're in the advanced I'm going to roll back up to the custom CSS. Remember, we're in the call to action settings, not the row or the column. So in the custom CSS, in the main element, I'm going to write backdrop dash filter colon. I want it to blur. So I'm going to say blur. And right after the R of blur, no gap, I'm going to put some round brackets in there and the amount that I want it to blur. Well, initially, I don't want it to blur at all, but just to show you what's going to happen, let's put in a pixel value. I'll put in 10 pixels. And you can see that's blurred out that background there. And this text is a lot more legible there. Now, just to make this more compatible with all browsers, I'm going to add another line. I'm going to copy this line here, backdrop filter blur, 10 pixels. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to type dash webkit dash and then paste that code back in after it for compatibility. Now this is great, but I only want it to be blurred when we hover over it. So again, if we hover over the dark writing of the thing we want to affect, we've got a little arrow there. At the moment, we're on the hover state. Let's go back to the desktop state. I'm going to copy this. Control C to copy. I'm going to change that 10 to a zero and similar with the one below that way it'll have no blur effect i'm going to go over to the hover version now i'm going to paste that code back in there with the 10 pics and if it's not enough blurred for you the, the higher the pixel value here the more it's going to blur if i take that down to two pics it's a little bit blurred but the higher the value, like I say, the more it is. I like it to be fairly well blurred so we can read the text there. Great, well that's it. 
Let's save our changes now. We'll go down and save the page changes. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the visual builder. And we'll go on down. There's our little image. As you can see, it's nice and sharp. When I hover over it, it's going to blur out. And we've got our little call to action sliding up. And we can click on the button, take our visitors where we want. And that's a great little effect to have on your site. People are mousing around your site and something like that happens. It's really going to get their attention quickly. And like I say, all that code will be down below the video. Please copy it, paste it, use it how you wish. So there you go, guys. There's a little text over image with blur effect for you using the Divi theme. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. And don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them or make a video for you. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.